All right, so basically what has happened, Apple kind of went in and changed some things on Apple Classroom. Uh, it actually looks a lot more like files if you've used that. Um, so I think they're trying to do some consistency across the board uh, to make these things look similar. So this is gonna be an update uh, of the new Apple Classroom. So as you can see, opening classes, it's gonna look very similar. Um, the name, however, is going to be the same as what Skyward names it. Um, but you can reorganize the classes by moving them around. So you can press and hold and organize. And what that looks like is this. So you can see I'll press and hold and I can drag those across and organize them, put them in the order that I need to put them in. And that's going to be a lot easier to keep track of those things. Um, this is what it's going to look like now when you actually tap on a class. So you can see it looks a little bit different on the uh, left hand side. We have our groups, um, actually the name of the class on the right hand side. It's going to have all of our students plus the options across the top. If you do not want this on the side in the very top left corner, you can tap that uh, deal and it'll take the sidebar off. Um, and so it'll move move away. If a kid's in an app, again, under apps, it's gonna list who is in the app, the numbers, all of that stuff. So good for classroom management. Um, this is a side-by-side. -side. So you can see on the left-hand side, this is the old version. On the right-hand side, this is the new version. Um, I have a blue arrow pointing towards opening an app. Uh, you can see that it actually has the app icon on the old version. On the new version, it almost looks like stacked folders. Um, so you can uh, tap that icon and it will open up the apps. And again, nothing's changed. You have to have your app uh, downloaded on your iPad. You have to have that app downloaded on all the students' iPads as well. It still gives you the option to lock them into an app uh, to where they cannot navigate out of that app. Um, Next to that is the Safari icon. So if you wanted to direct them to a uh, to a saved uh, website, you can definitely do that. Uh, I'm going to show you a better version of how to do that uh, later on in this video. So I wouldn't worry about that one that much. It's uh, it's a little clunky on how it works anyway. Um, on showing screens, this is obviously something that we use a lot. Um, you can see where the green arrows pointed towards the binoculars on the old version. On the new version, it's uh, the four squares. Uh, you can see on the new version, you can touch that and it turns around and shows the, shows the uh, screens of your students. Lock and mute had their own specific buttons on that. Uh, you can see with the red arrows pointed at the old version. On the new version, you'll hit the three dots. It, pops down the drop down menu and you can see that they have lock and mute there. Hide, what that does is if you, uh, all the kids are doing things, they're all in different places, all of that, you can actually hit hide and it brings everybody's iPad back to the home screen and also mutes everything. So it's kind of a, a deal, hey, everybody, I need everybody to come back and you know, five, four, then you can hit that, hit hide. It brings everybody back to home screen and mutes. Uh, on ending class, uh, we had it in the old version up in the top left-hand corner. On the new version, again, hit the three dots. Then you have end class. Once you hit end class, it gives you a summary of the apps that all the students were in, um, some kind of time frames, percentages, kind of gives you just a summary of how, uh, how the iPads were used uh, during that class period. Um, you can still create new groups, uh, so no worries there. On this one, you can see where the blue arrow's pointed down at the bottom. Uh, you can select new group, and then it's gonna pop up a deal. You can name that group so we can create stations with this, all the same stuff that we were doing before with Apple Classroom. Just again, looks a little bit different. We haven't lost any functionality, so we can still create those groups uh, and all of that good stuff. Um, and then again, when we touch one singular iPad for one student, we still have the options for opening and navigating viewing screens and all of that, uh, which are always, again, great, great ways to use uh, Apple Classroom, especially if you're airplaying your Apple Classroom up to the Apple TV. Um, you can simply choose view screen for each of your students and they can explain what they're doing. Um, it does not convey audio.
So it will not do audio to the Apple TV through this means. You would still have to have the student airplay directly to the Apple TV if they have video or audio uh, in their presentation or what they're showing. So nothing's changed there. Uh, we can still go through those uh, through all those things. Um, I talked about navigating uh, a class to the same web page using Safari. Um, we use that through AirDrop. So you can tell on the side by side here, I have the Shero or Share Square that's up next to uh, the top. Uh, you can touch that, hit AirDrop, and then when you have Apple Classroom going, you can see under People. I've got a blue arrow pointed there. We can simply just touch that on AirDrop and it will direct everybody in the classroom over to that specific web page. So another great practice for efficiency and all of those good things. So don't forget that just kind of as a little tip at the end of this video. Um, thank you so much. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us, uh, help at lcisd.net. Thank you.